Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Inside Artesian Football here on WREP 15 Sports. I'm your host, Eric Meyer, joined this week by Artesian Assistant Coach Brad Rose. Brad, appreciate you taking time to come in and join us this week. Happy to be here. Martinsville, a tough opening Mid-State Conference game on Friday night. It was a thrilling game, but the Artesians come up one point short as the Woodmen get the victory over the Artesians. We'll come back with Coach Rose and take a look at the highlights from that game. We'll talk a little bit about uh, how the defense is going this year for Coach Rose, the defensive coordinator, and we'll also look ahead to the Artesians' Mid-State Conference opener at home this weekend on Friday against a very good Decatur Central Ball Club. Up first, though, we'll take a break, come back, and take a look at the highlights of the game against Greenwood. We'll do that when we return inside Artesian Football. Shop at Keller's Office Supply at 159 North Main Street in Martinsville for all your school and office supply needs. When you come to Keller's, you'll find Superstore prices with hometown service. Keller's Office Supply offers same-day delivery for all your office and janitorial needs. And if they don't have your supplies in stock, why drive when you can call Keller's? They have over 35,000 unique and hard-to-find items that are available to deliver them to your door the very next day. Looking for new office furniture? John Lake and Keller's can design custom-made furniture to fit your space. Come to Keller's. We'll teach you like family. Before high school sports, I was always thinking about myself, didn't really care about other people. But now, since I play high school sports, it's made me realize that I need other people in my life. You know, I always try to help everybody. High school sports, the healthy part of a complete education. Back inside Artesian Football with assistant coach Brad Rose. Coach, on Friday night you travel to Greenwood. You face a very good Greenwood ball club. And from a spectator's standpoint, it was an outstanding ball game. Right. You couldn't ask for much more. Um, overall, though, you come up just short on the uh, two-point conversion um, at the end. Can you talk a little bit about how you think your team played on uh, Friday night? Well, I think overall we had pretty good effort from everybody. Um, had a few key mishaps on defense, but overall offense performed very well. Um, Greenwood's a very talented football team. They've got two studs come, that came back as seniors and, uh, and their running back and their quarterback, Heller. And uh, they did a real good job, and unfortunately we came up a short end of the stick, but you're going to win some and lose some like that, and unfortunately Friday night we came up with a short end. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from the contest against Greenwood on Friday night, and we'll start off on the defensive end. And right now you see the, the triple option there from Dustin Hill. Brian Hill scrapes over the top, makes a good tackle. Um, we needed that. Here again you're seeing the option, uh, Bo Tremble and uh, William O'Neill coming up, taking the pitch man out. Um, right here on the offensive side of the ball, Mason did a real good job of making good reads right here. No one's open, so he tucks the ball and runs it. And a big guy like him gets out in space. It's trouble for a defense. Right here, Kane Liska makes a nice little cut. Uh, sticks his foot in the ground, gets north and south, takes it in for a score. And that was a huge score for us. Kane's done a great job of doing that all year round. Here's a, here's a take a look at their uh, uh, starting tailback, pitch outside. Uh, Two linebackers came up with a big play there, Brian Hill and Bo Trimble. Here, Garrick John does a good job splitting the double team, getting the running back for a tackle for a loss. Right here, Mason finding Noah Davis on the hitch route, which is a quick route, which is designed to get the ball in the receiver's hands as quickly as possible. Noah catches the ball, turns up field, does the rest on his own. Kind of looked like that may have been a... Uh change or an audible at the line of scrimmage too. Yeah, basically what they try and do is, you know, we try and make reads and, and make the defense wrong. If the cornerback's up, we'll go vertical, and if he's off, we'll hitch up right there. And that's what they did. Mason and him made a good read and got in there. There you see Clayton Brown making the tackle for a loss. That was a big job. We're going to need more, a lot, lot more of that out of him this week. Mason throwing a check down here to uh, John Zlotti. John puts his head down, gets what he can. I right hear a little check down route. Uh, is that uh, that is Kane Liscom? He puts his head down, gets four or five tough yards there. I'm about to say we can't have the highlights on here without showing number six. Spencer does a great job. He had a heck of a game Friday night, offensively, defensively. He's really had a great season. Uh, so yeah, I'm glad to see him on there. 
There you go, you see an outside play there. Cody Foster comes out of coverage, comes up, makes the play on the edge. Really kind of did two jobs right there, Sadie covers and played the ball. Right here, Cody Foster coming up with another big hit um, on the reception, and then uh, Bo Tremble uh, picks up the, the ball midair for a, a fumble recovery. Mason does a good job there occupying the safety with that pump fake, kind of uses his eyes there and then uh, just holds it for a second, throws it up there and again Spencer Fink comes up with another huge play. Another solid play there but Nolan Lavender steps up there, running back bounces it outside, Nolan fits up and then Brian Hill finishes it off. That's what we always want to see. Always want to see the defense going backwards. Unfortunately, we haven't seen as much of that as we like this year, but uh, that was a great job right there, pushing the running back backwards for negative game. Mason does a good job of scrambling, of course, finds number six again. And uh, Spencer weaves in, ins and outs. And uh, I believe they end up, they count that as a score. Got in the end zone. Got yeah. in the end zone. Great job there. Great job right there. Uh, used to, uh, I'm sorry, Garrett John getting penetration up the middle, stopping the run play in the backfield. Anytime you get penetration by your nose tackle, it's going to create a lot of problems for the uh, offense. Mason does a good job doing a pump fake there and then finds Spencer in the middle of the uh, defense again for another touchdown. And then a two-point conversion, you just come up a little bit short there at the end of the game. The yep. one I wanted to go back to is the one prior to that on the touchdown prior to it you guys basically score a two-point conversion it mm -hmm. looks like you're going to get it but then the officials call the uh, penalty right. and um, offsides I guess once in uh, in high school football once offsides determine the plays whistled dead is that what correct happened yes yeah, dead, dead ball foul yeah so instead of you guys going into that last series with the possibility for a kick which would have been a win if that two-point conversion would have counted the one before uh, you make the decision to go one or two, and uh, like we said, uh, that's coach's decision, and uh, came up just a little bit short on the two-point conversion at the end. Yeah, yeah, and you know, it was uh, one of those deals where really, you know, hopefully the game never comes down to it, you know, hopefully that, uh, you know, you can step up and, and make some plays where it's not coming down to a one-point play, but uh, unfortunately it did this week, and you know, we, we, we came out on the, on the winning end of that many a times, and Friday night we just got the short end of the stick, and that's football. That's why you go out there and play the game, and you got to learn from those mistakes, come back and correct them, not make the same mistakes next week. Looking at their team offensively, a very good running team. Their team that threw the ball a little bit. Uh, you guys expected it, I think, coming in. You talked about how well they can distribute the football. They were able to pass a little bit uh, in the contest as well on mm -hmm. uh, Friday night. Yeah, the thing they were able to do, they were able to get their quarterback, who's very athletic, out in the pocket, outside the pocket, and roll the protection that way to keep, keep us from getting pressure on them. And they did a great job of that. Their offensive line did a good job of that. And uh, he, he did a good job finding the guys that were open when they were open. We've got it. Now, of course, some of that's him and some of that's, uh, you know, not good execution on our part, which we need to correct. Running-wise, their uh, running back number two um, had rushed the prior week for 200-plus yards. He got loose a little bit, but you did a pretty good job of containing him, keeping him in check. It seemed like he was a little bit difficult to keep track of, a little short, stocky. Mm -hmm. He seemed to do a good job keeping the pads low and kind of hiding behind his lineman until he could pop around. Yeah, they did a good job. They had a good game plan. They, you know, when he got the ball back there, it was, it was designed for him to be patient and wait for the creases to open, and that's what he did. He got back there, and, and uh, you know, he's a very patient runner, and, and you don't find that a lot in high school running backs. A lot of guys want to get there, stick their foot in the ground and go, and take some discipline to be able to sit there and, and be patient back there and, and find the hold and go, and he was able to do that, and he's got the speed and strength to do that. How difficult is that for a defense to be able to try to adjust to and be able to do that towards the game when you have a back that's going to be able to be or be willing to be that patient? Well, it's not necessarily just the back that gives you trouble. It's the, the quarterback and the running back combination because essentially what you've got when you've got a quarterback that can run the ball, you're playing an 11-on-11 11 11 defense, so you can't really have a safety or anyone else over top to protect the deep ball. You've got to commit that, find a way to get that, extra player in the box to stop that quarterback and and again there create it creates a lot of trouble for it. Greenwood able to come away with a victory in the first mid-state conference game of the year. We're going to take a break come back with the coach we'll talk a little bit more specifically about the defense and uh, some of the players on the defensive side of the ball with the defensive coordinator Brad Rose here on Inside Artesian Football when we continue. Hi, 
Hi, I'm Damon Routenkranz, Mortgage Loan Officer with Home Bank. And I'm Gordy Lucas. This is a great time to buy or build a new home or to refinance your current mortgage. If you're in the market for a home loan, give us a call or stop by one of our offices and find out why, when it comes to mortgage financing, there's no place like home. Home Bank is an FDIC insured equal housing lender. Visit one of our three locations, the main office in downtown Martinsville, or one of our branch locations at Grand Valley or 1067 Bridge Street, Mooresville. I was really self-conscious like when I was younger and I didn't have a lot of confidence because I was this tall, gangly thing, but High School Sports has made me more confident by showing that I can embrace my height and not try to hide it. Come into Martinsville Subway and enjoy a $5 foot long today. Back inside our teaching football with assistant coach Brad Rose, the coordinator, the defensive coordinator for the Artesians as well. And Brad, let's talk a little bit about your defense this year and uh, um, scheme wise. What do you guys try to do uh, week in and week out? Well, week in, week out, we try, to, we try to create a number of advantage for our defense, uh, whether that be in the run game or the pass game. Uh, pretty much play with four down linemen. And uh, you know, three three core linebackers, two safeties, and, and, and of course our cornerbacks, and try to play a lot of zone coverage, keep the keep the deep play in front of us, which uh, you know we weren't able to do a couple times this year, and uh, stop the run. Let's look at personnel a little bit. Can you talk about some of the guys that um, have performed over there on the defensive side of the ball thus far? We could start with the defensive line and move backwards, I guess. Yeah. Uh, well, Garrett Johns really stepped up his game from uh, last year. Uh, he had a pretty good game against Greenwood uh, last Friday. Um, and a lot of times they were double teaming him, and he did a great job getting off those double teams and getting to the ball. Um, Houston O'Neill stepped up, unfortunately got injured. Uh, we're expecting big things out of him this year. Uh, he really stepped up his game. Uh, he has a high motor, and with his size, creates a lot of uh, problems for an offensive lineman. Uh, moving back to linebacker, I've uh, been impressed with our, uh, our senior, Brian Hill. Uh, he's kind of stepped up as an elite, more of a leadership role this year. Um, and, of course, he's got great speed, so he's able to go sideline to sideline and uh, track down the ball, which is a huge asset. Um, and on the back end, you know, uh, Spencer Clefain, like I said, he's already had two interceptions this year. Um, really stepped up his game in the secondary from, from last year. Uh, good things from William O'Neill, and uh, also getting some contributions from Dallas Fuller and uh, Noah Davis on that side of the ball as well on the back end. What are some of the things coming in? We'll get into it a little bit more specifically uh, when we talk about Decatur. But what are some of the things you guys have been working on defensively this week to get in preparation for the rest of the season and for the Hawks coming up on Friday? Well, really, we, we, we try to get back to basic fundamentals. Um, anytime you have a loss, you always go back to the fundamentals because obviously you missed something there, and there was a reason for the breakdown. And so you trace it back to your fundamentals. And so what we've tried to really harp on this week is our pad level on the defensive line. Um, being more aggressive downhill on our linebackers, and just knowing our assignments and being sound in the secondary and communicating, uh, talking to each other, making sure everybody knows their checks and adjustments, and, and go from there. Got a big game coming up on Friday night. It's the Mid-State Conference opener at home against the Decatur Central Hawks. It's the Decatur Ball Club that uh, got a big win last week and looks like they're starting to get rolling after uh, two losses to open the season. So we'll take a break. We'll come back and take a preview of the contest against the Hawks when we return inside Artesian Football. Shop at Keller's Office Supply at 159 North Main Street in Martinsville for all your school and office supply needs. When you come to Keller's, you'll find superstore prices with a hometown service. Keller's has a wide variety of supplies from paper clips to office furniture. They also have a large selection of printer cartridges to choose from. Keller's offers same-day delivery for all your office and janitorial needs. And if they don't have your supplies in stock, they can deliver it to you the next day. Kellers is a proud sponsor of the Martinsville community. Come to Kellers. We'll teach you like family. Being a high school athlete has taught me so much. It made me realize that if you have a goal that you really want to accomplish, if you set your mind to it, there's no limitations to what you can do. High school sports, a healthy part of a complete education. Back inside our teaching football with assistant coach Brad Rose, coach 
coming up on Friday night. The Decatur Central Hawks will come to town. Uh, Coach Dixon has done a nice job uh, there at Decatur in his several years. I know you're uh, friends with uh, Coach Dixon as well, and so it uh, should be a good matchup coming up on uh, Friday night. Yeah, we always look forward to playing uh, Decatur, any conference rival really, because, uh, again, our goal is to win the conference championship every year, and so this is another step on that pro process. The Hawks, the opponent coming in. Let's talk a little bit about their ball club. They start off 0-2, but they get a big win. Um, last week. What are some of the things, um, we'll start with their offensive side, since you're the defensive coordinator, what are some of the things they're going to try to do offensively on Friday night? Well, offensively, they're, they're a power team. They want to put the ball in the running back's hands and, and, and get downhill as fast as possible. Um, they also do a little bit of an option where they'll use their quarterback to run the ball. Um, but overall, their main thing is they want to put, pound the ball down your throat, and then when need be, they'll open up with some play action passes. But their main deal is to run it down your throat and see who's more physical. What are you guys going to have to do defensively then to try to take some of that stuff away from them? All starts up front, offensive, defensive. It always starts on the line, and uh, we got to have a big game from our D linemen. we got to have them playing with pad level low, firing out off the ball, and then from there everything falls into place from the back end, from linebackers back to the secondary, but it always starts up front. Defensively for Decatur Central, what can we expect out of them, com them coming in on Friday night? I think you can expect a multiple, uh, multiple front defense. They're going to come out in a three-man front, and they're also going to come out in a four-man front. Uh, typically, they like to bring a lot of pressure uh, against us uh, offensively, so we got to be ready for that, uh, make sure our blocking schemes are, 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 are in place, and uh, make sure we make the proper reads when they do make them pay when they do bring the pressure. Athletically, it's usually a pretty good ball club, mm -hmm. and um, they're starting to get things going. What are some of the concerns that you guys as a coaching staff have about the Hawks coming in on Friday night? Well, really, we try not to worry about what they can do for us, but what we can do to them. And so we really don't have, I guess, per se, a whole lot of concerns. Our main concern is can we do the job that we're supposed to do on both sides of the ball? And then we feel as a program that if we can do what we're supposed to do, that that will take care of the wins and losses. So what are some of those things key-wise that you guys are going to have to do offensively and defensively coming in to be successful on Friday night? Defensively, like I said, we got to we got to play with good pad level. we got to make sure that we're making the right reads at our positions, making sure that we're playing physical above all else and playing with uh, nonstop effort. Uh, on the offensive side of the ball, of course, turnovers is a huge thing. We can't turn the ball over. Uh, and, uh, you know, making sure that we're taking care of our quarterback up front and making sure that, uh, you know, that, uh, that uh, we're opening up the holes for the, for the running back. And when they do try and take away the passing game, they're able to run the ball. When they try and take away the running ball, run, running game, excuse me, they were able to throw the ball. So just take what they give you and uh, make them pay. All right, Coach, we appreciate taking time to come in this week. And My we'll pleasure. we'll see you there on Friday. Absolutely, thank you. That's Brad Rose, the assistant coach, defensive coordinator here on Inside Artesian Football. The Artesians coming up Friday night at home at Siderwoods Field. They will play host to the Decatur Central Hawks, 7 o'clock. They kick off set for get out there and support the Artesians. I'd like to thank assistant coach Brad Rose for coming in. For appreciate Brad it. and Carl Van Diebender who produced it, I'm Eric Meyer. We'll see you again next week inside Artesian Football.